Patrick, what was your evaluation? Are you are you cel- are you celebrating a, a a clutch defensive stand at the end, or lamenting the fact that it got there? Ah, <laughs> uh, that was the worst looking NFL team, and I've seen the Lions twice a year for my whole life. <laughs> That Steelers team was the biggest piece of horse crap I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> well into the third quarter, they were unbelievable. Those holes that Cook was running through, the skinny Judd could have gained 200 yards last night. Judd well, here he for Livia. Yep. Running <laughs> through those gaps. And then when he went around the corner, what did you, they show that one play? They only had three guys on the what would have been their right side defensively. And then they all started going the other way that time they gave them a little run outside. What the hell was that? Fire Mike Tomlin today. Today. (laughs) He has lost it. He's worn out at age 48 or whatever he is. (laughs) It was a joke. And I got to admit, I spent 20 minutes minutes watching Rutgers and Purdue because it was so rotten. And I come back and all of a sudden they got two touchdowns. And I said, well, okay, this is stupid. But uh, it's amazing to me that it could have happened. And then the Steelers on the last drive. What is with that once great quarterback who's now slower than a statue standing back there throwing these little dump offs? Why doesn't he just throw it away and go to the next play? It's it was unbelievable the amount of time he wasted throwing two yard passes. He, he threw at least two of those, and then one time he threw another one, and the guy got out of bounds for him with a great play. But uh, it was incredible how they 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 just collapsed. It's amazing. I, I was going to say, and and they still had a chance to almost tie. So that that game though, Patrick, the one thing it did was it encapsulated the Vikings season perfectly uh, from their perspective because the first half was what could have been and the second half was what is <laughs> it was absolutely perfect well zim had the good quote he said we look so good the first half we could have beat anybody we look so bad the second half we couldn't beat anybody that was basically uh, uh you know there was a little i think it was a little not exactly that but that was the message Pat, here's your here's your stat of the day here. All right, so you so Dalvin Cook, right, running through you know Grand Canyon size holes. According to Pro Football Focus, Dalvin Cook had 110 yards before contact last night. <laughs> oh yes, I'm surprised it isn't higher. Is that before that, contact? Where is that historically? That's got to be enormous. I don't know, but that's that's amazing. So he he also had 95 yards after contact. You know, and and not all of it was him just. You know, Some blowing guys over. Contacts were, uh, you know, like a guy <laughs> reaching out and touching him. They couldn't, you know, he would have made 160 yards in flag football last yesterday. <laughs> I mean, it was it was unbelievable how wide open it was. Now he he ran great. He did make a nice play for that catch that saved him. To, that didn't give Pittsburgh even more time to get down the field. That gave him that first down. On what uh, third and whatever it was, eight nine yards. He made a nice play on there, but uh, it was it was incredible. Well, Kirk, God love Kirk. He may had the sixty two yarder to Osborne, but he had two completions in the second half until uh, that last drive there, something like that. But what's going on? How did four happen? total, right? Four total in the second half. Yeah, yeah, four total. I think prime time oh, Kirk showed up two again. Picks. Two picks. Two- you might as well. I see that uh, they, they're kind of they're saying that the receivers could have done a better job on the interceptions, but uh, you know, it would really. I think historically, long run, that would have been a great game to lose, don't you think? If you're a Viking fan, if you're a young Viking fan, I've seen it. But if you're a young Viking fan, you should be able to say twenty years from now. Remember that one that we were ahead twenty nine to nothing. That's the thing. Like if like if you're up twenty nine nothing, if you're gonna if you're gonna make it that close, you might as well just finish the job, right? Yeah. It's a it's a it's a it's a better story for everyone. I think the only second half in NFL history where a team has lost a twenty nine point lead is the uh, you know the Frank Reich game in uh, uh, Houston Buffalo playoff game was thirty two to five uh, thirty five to three. 
uh, in the second half when uh, uh, I, I looked it up and Houston intercepted a Buffalo pass right early in the second half to go ahead 35-3 to three and then uh, suffered a rather ignominious defeat. But, <laughs> but, but that was against a good team, Buffalo, right? This was against a collection of crap. They're terrible. I don't know. Somebody said this on Twitter. How did this team possibly tie the Lions? You know, how are they good enough to tie the Lions, the Steelers, as bad as they looked? That's that's to me is more amazing that that this happened against a team that looked as horrible as they did to start with. And Ben, God Ben, do the world a favor. Give it up. He is terrible. He is can't move out of the way of anybody. He just stands back there and he makes bad decisions. And you and I both commented right at the beginning. Why is he looking at his wrist? He's been playing. I was a young man when I covered him winning a Super Bowl, for God's sake. <laughs> so and he's got to look at his plays. Why is he got to look at his plays? No. I know. It's, his plays? it's not like it's a new system. He's at the same coach. <laughs> Yes, Same right. team. They haven't. It's not like they've overhauled the system, yeah. and he's still like, oh, okay. You know, what's the right, what's right. what's that play what, called again? I wonder what that one was. <laughs> Old people forget things. Come on, Royce. We know, know that. Old true. people forget things. I think he should maybe go see the. You know, as long as as many times as he's gotten hit, he might want to go see the doc. So, Pat, if if, if Tom Brady is eating kale and avocados for every meal and sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber for the last 20 years, what's Ben been doing? Don't you believe, though, that Ben, as big and strong as he was, just was willing to take more hits his whole life, right? To stand up and, and you know, you remember guys hanging all over him and he's still throwing the ball for, you know, years and years. And he used to be, you know, he could take off and, that was one of the lowest moments in Viking history when they let him scramble for a first yeah. <laughs> How about that that sundial run? That, <laughs> yes, but Pat, that looked like you or me, like like trying to go forward. It, it, it was incredible. This defense is at really its heart so bad. The core <laughs> is so bad. It that ball came out early, but boy, there wasn't there two seconds you thought that guy caught the ball. For the time at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. It was yeah, no, he did. He did. It was a tight he end. did for he, a second. That was a pretty good throw there, actually. Yes, it was. One, but uh, wow, it was unbelievable. They they have what now? Ten of the. What are they? There's six and seven, right? Yeah, six, six and seven. seven. Yeah. But eleven of them were still undecided on the last play. Was that? Is that? Their so ten, ten. five of the games have been decided as the time ran out. Okay. And, and then ten of them were one possession, right, or something on the last play, or something. Yeah, and then you know, and then there, yeah, there's so the five were decided like with a field goal or something, and then a, hand, a small handful of games like that. Yeah. But they, but they did, but they did win, which which fits in the classic, like, as Judd was saying all last night. These last two weeks are both classic Vikings games, right? Like yeah. losing to the Lions is sort of a classic Vikings thing in that situation, and then. Everyone bails on you after you lose to the Lions, yeah. and then you come right back and you take a twenty-nine point lead and show some yeah. life again. And and the the Steelers, you know, somehow miraculously beat the overrated Ravens last week. So you thought, well, maybe they're not as bad as they've looked when we've seen them in the past. And then oh, no. yesterday they were worse. They oh. were worse. It was incredible. So now they now can they do it? Can they go to Soldier Field? and keep their tradition of losing to absolutely they get three extra days to prepare for a bears team that's going to lose to the packers on sunday night with justin fields beat up this it's going to be really hard to go to chicago and continue your tradition of throwing up on yourself at soldier field but this team after last night i'm convinced they can lose to everybody this despicable group will give that as good a run as you possibly can. This yeah. is as unlikable collection of humans on a team as I've ever, I, I, they are. As I keep saying, Patrick, they are the two thousand and like seventeen wild. They are equally as unlikable. How do you like Bashad or whatever his name is? He Breland, yeah, basically Breland. Yeah, he runs and he like 
grabs the guy and he's wrestling with him down the field and then they throw the flag and he goes ah what how could because the guy finally pushes it back like and then he makes the great catch but how how can they be bad enough that he plays how can they be bad enough at the corner that he plays he's terrible chris boyd plays pat Chris, I know. Boyd, Chris Boyd shouldn't be in high <laughs> yeah, school football. And he defends one play and then gets a 15 yard for talking. Well, he was excited. It's the first play he's made in you know, two <laughs> I thought, years. I thought Anthony, Anthony Barr was going to decapitate him. <laughs> yeah, he's going to yeah. kick his ass. Yeah. God, I, 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 that's my, you know, it's a, it's the most grueling game in the world. Uh, you know, you're, you got to be half nuts to play it. Right. Mm-hmm. But it is incredible to me the amount of stupid things football players do. It's just incredible. You know, Chase Claypool. Chase yeah, Claypool. Yes. I mean, three or four <laughs> absurd blunders yesterday. And, you know, including, you know, it, the, the Steelers would have liked to have that one more play, Clay, if you – he said they hit the ball away from him, but it's because he was pointing it outwards, right? To uh, yes. to to brag about making a first down catch when you're racing against the clock. The clock's ticking down. He's oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah these are not the Steelers of our youth. Uh, <laughs> if Joe Green was watching that game last night, he's uh, probably you don't think Lynn Swan would uh, would style a first down catch as the clock is ticking <laughs> down? John Stallworth, take oh. that. You know the the other thing in play for for next week, if the and and we've I think we've been on Matt Nagy watch for about a month and a half or more now. But if they if the Bears get smoked by the Packers, and they fire Matt Nagy, we might see the Bears with a, like a short term. Hey, all right, let's they they fired the coach. They got an interim coach. Let's win one to show our pride. And the Vikings are going to be the first opponent out of the gate if that happens. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, that's that's probably true. But usually those things last, you know, they run out of the tunnel and they're excited and they last about five minutes. If you come out and, you know, you come out and run to them. Uh, I got to make one confession. The guys from Fort Myers, uh, Dave and Mark, uh, got a radio show down there and about once every three months I hear from them and they had me on yesterday morning and the, and the producer who called was a young guy and he was saying, Hey, is Delvin cook going to play? You think Delvin cook's going to play? And I said, nah, I don't think he's going to play. Cause it was obviously a guy wanted to know for his fantasy team. Yeah. Oh no. Play, oh no. Oh he no. Oh. Or not. No, said, he benched him. I said, I don't think I, I said, I don't know. I haven't seen any hint that he's going to play. So, you know, <laughs> they haven't, it, I would guess they give him, they give him the 10 days before the next game. So that guy, that kid, he's never going to call me again, even if they want me to, they don't want me on here. So oh, anyway, Pat, I, I Pat, feel bad oh, about that one. That poor, I'm yeah. sure that the, I could hear the curse words all the way from Fort Myers as Delvin was rock. How many points was he worse than a fan in a fantasy league last night? About 25. I don't know. I think this should be Pat's MO, like, you know, late nineties. Uh, what do you think? You think Randy Moss is going to play against the Cowboys on Thanksgiving? Yeah, ah, he's, he's a little, beat up. He's, he's a little banged know. up. <laughs> we only <laughs> got three balls that day. They were just all touchdowns about 60 yards. That yeah. <laughs> That was one of Randy proved to me he's a complete idiot, though. And I don't care what anybody thinks. The national media, this was when the national media used to come in for games like that. And New York Times is there, LA Times, all these papers from around the country. And he MFs everybody and won't answer questions afterwards as a rookie after he catches, you know, he, I don't even know who he's mad at, but he just decided to be a punk that day. And I thought, what the hell? You know, some guy flies in from the New York Times is going to write about how great you are and you're not going to, you're going to act like a jackass. He's, uh, you know, so. Yeah, was he, was he like, was he mad that, you know, well, why didn't, you know, I, I the way know. that he was he painted was just, in college or something? He wanted to be a, he just was one of his days. He wanted to be a dink, you know. Which now he's a happy, too. now he's a happy guy. He, oh, lo- yeah, no, he loves happy. the media. He's in the media. I don't think he loves the media. He's in the media, and he probably loves the guys that he's working with and giving him a paycheck. But, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's all that counts. Hey, go for volleyball team. Beats Baylor. They got yeah. 
they got the Mighty Badgers uh, Saturday, and uh, Wisconsin is really good. Uh, they got them there to go to the Final Four, though. But uh, wow, that's a that's a big win for them, Baylor. They were about a month ago. They got smoked by Penn State at home, and it didn't. Things looked gloomy. Maybe five weeks ago, and they came back. I was over there, and they beat Ohio State, which was really good at the time on a Saturday night, and they kind of turned the season around then. But uh, a lot of fun that team, and uh, this will be, uh, you know, they're back in the elite eight. So it's time to win a championship. Judd and I have everyone on the hot seat. Anything short of a championship, and we clean and we clean house. Yeah, well, let's see. Well, the wild, I mean, God almighty. Let's, let's, Give us the Stanley Cup and let's just go home, okay? Yeah, all right. I'm bored. They're 5 2, you know. Somebody pointed out they were, uh, they gave up, they were ahead 3 0 and gave up two and then had to give uh, two empty netters, but who cares? There was never a possibility. This, this team. <laughs> that, I want the cup for a day. I want the damn cup. I have done so much for this team as far as motivating them to get to the right place that if I don't get the cup for a day, I'm going to be like very a, upset. Pit like, he, he's almost in your neighborhood. The Pit Lake crew grew you up. You drop it off. They think Robbinsdale type of area over here in Golden Valley. The Pit Lake, they, they'll drop it. They'll, they'll let you have it for a day. Take, hey, it Pat, the, favorite, uh, take it to your favorite haunts. Pat, the Twins hired a new a first base coach this morning. Do you see that? Hmm. Ooh. Hank Cogner, the former uh, Angels and Astros catcher, oh, really? backup catcher. He's going to be their first base coach and catching they coach. Catching. They need a catching coach because they really haven't. They had Bill Evers doing it, and Got you know, frame. Bill, nice fellow, but he's probably can't squat down there. So yeah, I so don't know. I can't. I think Hank was a Judd. Uh, I mean, Phil, remind me, wasn't Hank kind of a hitting type yeah. of catcher? He wasn't a wasn't noted as a defensive whiz, was he? I don't think so. He was a power hitter. I mean, he was a first round pick. He's only thirty three years old. Um, who, who, who did it last year? Tommy Watkins. Uh, Tommy Watkins, who's moving to third base and remains the outfield coach. Tony Diaz has been named the assistant bench coach. This is it. This so is we're it. doing third a whole shuffle. Change. Third base so coaching change are huge. We only have two bench coaches this year. Is all then? Okay. So who's the who's the chief? bench coach then <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i don't know it's uh we've come a long way from frank willisey manager bob rogers bullpen and pitching coach ralph rowe hitting coach and first base coach and Vern morgan third base coach that's it that's all they were don't we have to have someone just exclusively overseeing like you know levels of rest and days off too i think Someone to monitor Rocky the schedule of, you know, Josh Donaldson needing three off days. And it does seem kind of silly for us to uh, get excited about anything in baseball in the current situation, though, does it? Yeah, I saw I saw that email come in from Dustin Morris. I didn't I didn't read the headline. I was like, oh, the Twins made a transaction. Is oh no, they didn't. They just brought in <laughs> a catching coach. No, All right. So you are allowed during the lockout to hire a first base coach. Okay, that's mm -hmm. cool. yeah, that so, is, good to know. That is very good. What else? There was something else in my mind, but I can't remember what the hell it was. So that's well, the uh, I feel like your I feel like your faith in the Timberwolves started to wane on Twitter the other night. I think oh you're, like four night. losses no. and you're off the bandwagon. I mean, oh god, four bad losses though. Yeah. How about Hank though? I mean, how about Hank? How about Anthony Edwards? His quotes about his quotes about cat were priceless. Mm -hmm. It's god, great. I hope, I hope this guy never changes. He said, "Come on, cat." They double in you. If you hold the ball, they double in you. You kind of, you got to go quick, cat. You can't wait to get doubled. You, you setting up the double, cat, cat. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it took him, you know, it took him what eighty games to look around the room and say, "All right, I, I'm the guy here." You know, he still shoots <laughs> six for nineteen every other night, so he's got to fix that. But the fact that a second year guy who's twenty years old feels, and he wasn't like demeaning cat he wasn't well, throwing him under the bus he was just you know saying you're our best player go yeah. when they throw your ball go don't let yeah. them get you you get doubled and then you're then you got to give the ball up it's great like mb does be be more like that guy that you hate from philadelphia cat yeah, <laughs> yeah he brings up mb you know, today uh, you know what makes you feel uh even older than i am is uh when ricky comes to town though you see, wily old veteran Ricky is here. It seems like about three weeks ago that he was coming in on the plane, doesn't it? Right. Uh, 
and the young, refreshing Ricky, who we all gonna, we're going to love, that was going to be great. So. I think Ricky's return was a top ten in terms of like Wolves fans being excited oh, about oh, something. Yeah. It was a top ten moment in franchise history. Yeah, I unfortunately, agree I agree mm-hmm. with you. Greeting him at the airport it was fantastic. <laughs> all right, standards. gentlemen. Uh, Phil, we're going to have a reminder for you of uh, a Minnesota winner here later today. Apparently. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to get to the airport quick here. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I might I might be seeing you back at Teresa's tomorrow. I don't know. Okay. All right. See you later. <laughs> All right. See ya. That's uh, wrapping with Roycey here on Mackie and Judd on the Score North YouTube channel.